a convicted killer free on bail 25 years later. Justice on the way. The one witness who helped put him behind bars for murder. She was very, very credible, uh, and I believe that was the eyewitness testimony that, that made it for the state. And may give him his chance at freedom. Did you witness a murder down at the pier at the Casco Bay Lines here in Portland, Maine? No. You did not? No. I just want my life back. I just want all of our lives back. Just in tonight, a moment nearly three decades in the making video of Anthony Sanborn Jr. being released from jail. Right now, Sanborn is out on bail as this continu continues to develop tonight. We do have team coverage covering all of the angles of this historic court ruling. He seemed very overwhelmed, but also relieved. This is clearly a moment he's been thinking about for decades. The 44-year-old was greeted outside by dozens of family and friends. He's long maintained his innocence, saying he did not commit the 1989 murder of Jessica Briggs. Today, a judge ordered he be freed on bail after the state's star witness from 1992 got back on the stand, claiming she was threatened by investigators and never actually saw the crime. Like you said, we caught up with Sanborn just minutes after his release. Here's what he had to say. Just happy to be home and, and you know, it's almost justice, but it's, uh, it's a good feeling. But thank you guys for the support that you gave while I was sitting in there. That was an uh, inspiration because I, I didn't have much hope in people, and now I do. So thank you, Channel 13, especially. for. Where are you headed guys. right now? What's the first thing you want to go do? Uh, <laughs> there's so many things. I don't know, but <laughs> thank you. Well, Greg, Anthony Sanborn walked into a crowded courtroom today filled with his supporters who say they are happy. They were finally able to plead his case and possibly free him. Anthony Sanborn walks into a standing room only courtroom, moved to tears by support. I think justice has been done. And Sanborn's attorneys outlined their petition, saying there was no evidence linking him to the crime he was convicted of in 1989, saying the state's case was completely circumstantial. This has been an abhorrent miscarriage of justice, and that guy deserves to be free because he's innocent. The defense even brought in the state star witness from 89, Hope Katie, who reversed the damning testimony she gave 25 years ago that identified Sanborn as Briggs' killer. Do you have any knowledge other than what state actors told you that Tony Sanborn killed Jessica Briggs? Do you have any independent knowledge of that? No. Katie also said she was instructed by detectives on how to testify. After that, the judge granted Sanborn his request. That there is a reasonable likelihood that you will succeed on the petition and I am going to set bail. Outside the courthouse, his family says they're one step closer to getting his name cleared. I just want my life back. I just want all of our lives back. And I just thank Justice Wheeler for being a woman of compassion and for doing the right thing. It's given me faith in our system. I always kept it in the back of my mind that there'd always be a day that he'd be coming home. And he is coming home. CBS 13 has complete team coverage of this major development. The I-Team's John Crisos tracked down the original case documents and spent the afternoon digging through them. And John, some surprising new details and allegations in this case that went to court way back in 1992. And Kim, this is a massive filing here in this case. It is three volumes, in fact, at the Cumberland County Courthouse. But Sanborn's defense team says what's not in those files is what shows clear misconduct by the state prosecutor and detectives. This is what the state's case, nearly three decades old, against Sanborn looks like. There's the history, the indictment, appeal, and some transcripts. What's not in the old files, some 1990 witness statements, part of police records, but not in court and never sent to the defense. A handwritten note seen here, statements not sent as discovery per request of Detective Young. Sanborn's lawyer says this is proof the state suppressed information that should have been turned over. Documents from 25 years ago also suggest the state knew their star witness, Hope Katie, had a serious vision problem and didn't disclose that to the defense team. And just unsealed late this afternoon, signed documents from two other witnesses say they also lied during the trial because they were pressured and told what to say by the prosecutor and detectives. 
She was murdered 28 years ago in Portland. Tonight, for the first time and only on 13, the family of Jessica Briggs is talking about the violent crime. They tell CBS 13's John Crisos that they're convinced the right man was convicted of killing their daughter. But now Anthony Sanborn Jr. is out on bail as this case heads back to court next week. She did this. Yep, she used to do a lot of cross stitch. Sue Briggs holds on to memories. Her love for her daughter Jessica is forever woven into her heart, but so is the pain. A friend of mine saw her on TV, called me. 28 years later, Briggs remembers the murder and trial as if they were yesterday. It's been a long time. Not something you want to come back. But now the whole case is getting another look. In April, a key witness recanted her testimony. Did you witness a murder down at the pier at the Casco Bay Lines here in Portland, Maine? No. You did not? No. In what the Attorney General's office called a highly unusual step, Justice Joyce Wheeler released convicted murderer Anthony Sanborn on bail. There is a reasonable likelihood that you will succeed on the petition and I am going to set bail. I thought it was a circus. I mean, the courtroom's packed with people that are applauding, standing ovations, that stuff shouldn't be allowed. I mean, everybody is jumping on the bandwagon like, oh, he's been wrongly convicted. That has not been proven. It's almost like he's got this cult following now of, you know, like he's the greatest thing. And nothing has changed. He's still a convicted murderer. Justice Wheeler went on to say, this is only a bail hearing, so I cannot apologize to you now. She shouldn't say things like that. She's telling him, well, you should fare well on your motion, and it, it sounds like she's already got her mind made up that he's an innocent man. We wanted to talk with Justice Wheeler, but a spokeswoman for the court told us Wheeler couldn't comment on a pending case. I don't feel she should be hearing this case. Briggs wrote letters to the state's highest judges and filed a complaint with the main judicial system. The attorney general's office also asked Justice Wheeler to recuse herself based on comments Wheeler made during the April bail hearing. But Wheeler said no, she's staying on the case. Very rarely do I make decisions that both people like. Um, and to the family, I'm sorry that this may indeed reopen the um, question of who murdered um, Jessica. Um, but if that's justice, so be it. You know, I was convinced, and so was the prosecution and everyone else. The jury, everyone was convinced that it was him. Are you convinced still? I am, because they haven't done anything to change my mind yet. If I, I do where I don't agree with the outcome, I need it to be fair, and I just don't feel it's going to be fair with her presiding over it. Anthony Sanborn's defense attorney, Amy Fairfield, declined our request for an on-camera interview. She told us Sanborn also wouldn't be able to speak with us before that court hearing on Monday. So for now, Sanborn's guilty conviction stands. We'll be in the courtroom all next week, so be sure to stay with CBS 13 as the story develops. Well, there's a lot that happened involving efforts by the defendant to get Hope Katie here to testify in the way she did. The I-Team discovers new details tonight in the case of convicted murderer Anthony Sanborn Jr. Sanborn was released on bail in April after a key witness recanted her 1992 trial testimony. But documents uncovered by investigative reporter John Crisos reveal that witness went to police just days before she recanted, saying she felt threatened and harassed by Sanborn's defense team. Court records and police reports obtained by the Young Team show Hope Katie claims Sanborn's defense attorney and a private investigator were following her, texting and going to her house repeatedly. Katie said she was scared and wanted to know how to get them to leave her alone, a claim Sanborn's defense team is strongly denying. Did you witness a murder down at the pier at the Casco Bay Lines here in Portland, Maine? No. You did not? No. After hearing this exchange between Hope Katie and defense attorney Amy Fairfield, a judge decided Anthony Sanborn Jr. should be released on bail. Sanborn spent 25 years in prison after being convicted for killing Jessica Briggs. During Sanborn's 1992 trial, Katie was said to be the only witness to the murder. Her testimony, key to the conviction that put Sanborn behind bars. When she saw Mr. Sanborn take a knife out and slash her and stab her. But with that testimony now recanted, the case is getting a whole new look. 
State prosecutors don't think that should happen. Well, there's a lot that happened involving efforts by the defendant to get Hope Katie here to testify in the way she did. Just three days before Katie recanted, she went to the Augusta Police Department with her caseworker from a mental health service organization. According to this police report, Katie told officers defense attorney Fairfield and a private investigator were threatening her, even following Katie's kids at school. Fairfield spoke to the I-team by phone today. Nobody threatened her, nobody harassed her, nobody did anything of the sort. In a transcript of lobby video at the Augusta Police Department, Katie said, I feel like I'm backed in a corner. Police records show a few days earlier, Katie also called Augusta Police, claiming the same people were harassing her. In court documents, prosecutors claim Katie's recent change in testimony is the product of pressure and harassment over the course of several years and in multiple states and locations but you're certain you did not witness a murder? Certain. Absolutely certain, yes. A month after this hearing, Katie's caseworker told officers she believed Katie was pressured by the defense and felt boxed in. Katie said she did not see the murder, so it would all end and everyone would leave her alone, according to this police report. Sanborn's lead defense attorney, Amy Fairfield, wrote in court documents evidence that she harassed, induced, or offered bribes to witnesses to procure their testimony is irrelevant and a waste of time. Nobody has threatened, nobody has coerced any witnesses in this case on this side of the fence. All we are looking for are the facts to be presented and the truth to prevail. The state says there's more proof Katie was telling the truth during the original trial. This report from the Innocence Project. The group works to exonerate those who are wrongly convicted. Less than two years ago, Katie stuck to her story, telling the investigator she was on the pier the night of the murder. I hope Katie says, I know what I saw. And she goes on to say that I know what I saw and I know he's not innocent. A hearing on the evidence as part of this post-conviction review is now set to start one week from today. Anthony Sanborn says he's innocent and denies he had anything to do with the murder of Jessica Briggs. All these years later, Anthony Sanborn, do you believe guilty or not guilty of, of killing Jessica Briggs? Absolutely 100% guilty. And that wasn't what my job was. That was the jury's job. That's what the jury found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt based on the evidence that for the first time a former state prosecutor is speaking out after a judge decides to give bail to a convicted murderer in a 25 year old case. Pam Ames tells the CBS 13 I team she's tired of being thrown under the bus by Anthony Sanborn's new defense attorney. Sanborn is out of prison tonight on bail after a witness recanted her testimony last week. We had ample evidence. Former prosecutor turned defense attorney Pam Ames says she has no doubt Anthony Sanborn killed Jessica Briggs on the Portland waterfront in 1989. In her first TV interview since Sanborn was released on bail, Ames says the public and the judge are rushing to judgment. It sounds ludicrous to me. And she made a premature judgment and allowed a convicted murderer whose right to bail had been extinguished 28 years ago to roam free in Westbrook. A spokeswoman for Judge Joyce Wheeler told us the judicial code of conduct prohibits a judge from commenting on a pending matter. Wheeler gave Sanborn bail after a star witness now says she did not see Sanborn kill the victim, claiming she was told what to say. Did you witness a murder down at the pier? at the Casco Bay Lines here in Portland, Maine? No. It's very clear that she's lying now. Ames denies she did anything wrong when she was prosecutor. Claims made by defense attorney Amy Fairfield. That you coached witnesses, that mm -hmm. you told them what to say. At that time when you were a prosecutor, did any of those things happen? None. And there would be no way I could ever and would never threaten her, promise her, coerce her. Her attorney was sitting right there. Ames also wants to make it clear Katie was not the state's only witness. In fact, she didn't come forward until years after the crime, just months before the trial. It's when she contacted law enforcement to say, I, I know something about this murder. I was there. I saw it. We didn't know that before. This was a case that was set for trial in June without her. 
She says during the eight-day trial, there were 58 witnesses and plenty of evidence. We had scratches on Anthony Sanborn's face and his admission that he'd gotten into a fight with Jessica um, that night. The physical evidence corroborated what everybody said all the way through it. Fairfield didn't call us back today, but in a previous interview with CBS 13, insisted Sanborn is innocent. This has been an abhorrent miscarriage of justice, and that guy deserves to be free. Ames has agreed to testify at a post-conviction hearing next month. Hope Katie couldn't be reached today for comment regarding her testimony. New developments tonight in a 28-year-old murder case in Portland. One of the detectives who investigated the stabbing of Jessica Briggs is now turning over boxes of notes and evidence that he had at home. As CBS 13's John Crisos reports, all of this is happening while convicted murderer Anthony Sanborn is out on bail for a crime he and his defense team say he didn't commit. Just happy to be home and, and you know, it's almost justice, but it's, uh, it's a good feeling. While Anthony Sanborn is out of prison, his defense attorney, Amy Fairfield, is working to make sure he never goes back. That guy deserves to be free because he's innocent. A judge gave Sanborn bail last month after a key witness says she lied during the original trial and did not see Sanborn kill Jessica Briggs. Attorney Fairfield's latest move is this court filing. In it, she claims police and prosecutors worked together to hide evidence from Sanborn's defense team almost 30 years ago. According to these documents, now retired Portland police detective turned private investigator Jim Daniels handed over boxes of case files he's kept at home in his attic. Evidence Fairfield says was never disclosed to Sanborn's defense team for the trial. He didn't do it. It's as simple as that. He didn't do it. Daniels didn't call us back today, but Fairfield says these boxes contain original witness statements, police reports, detailed notes, even a knife and box cutter. Evidence she claims was crucial and should have been provided. There's also this police sketch of a bearded man who witnesses say they saw with Jessica Briggs before she was murdered. The sketch was never publicly released, and the defense team didn't see it until last week. But Fairfield says it does not match what Tony Sanborn looked like in May 1989. Last week in an interview with CBS 13, former prosecutor Pam Ames denied withholding any material from the defense. We were under a microscope. With cameras in the courtroom, we were under a microscope. Um, and anything that went in to evidence was admissible. Sanborn and his defense team want the judge to overturn the jury's guilty verdict. The attorney general's office says it will respond in court. Portland police also wouldn't comment today about why evidence was being stored at a retired detective's home. This case goes back to court later this month. I want to thank you for being someone that had integrity enough to have the guts to do what you did. Right in the middle of a lengthy review of his 1992 murder conviction, Anthony Sanborn Jr. is now a free man. The 45-year-old will not be going back to prison, but he wasn't exonerated either and is still a convicted murderer. This case has been playing out in court for decades, and CBS 13 is on your side with team coverage with today's decision and reaction from the victim's parents. We begin with CBS 13's John Carisos at the courthouse to explain exactly what happened with this deal, John. This deal just came together late this afternoon for 21 days now. Anthony Sanborn Jr. has been fighting for his freedom here at the Cumberland County Courthouse, and today he got it. He left the courthouse today, headed home, not back to prison. Let's take you inside the courtroom earlier today. Really a sudden conclusion to this post-conviction review as Sanborn and his team accepted an offer from the state. Sanborn's conviction stands for the 1989 murder of Jessica Briggs, but Judge Joyce Wheeler agreed this state with the state attorneys. 27 years of incarceration for the crime is enough, so she resentenced him for the crime, saying the 70-year sentence was cruel and unusual punishment because sentencing standards have changed for juvenile murderers. Sanborn was 16 at the time of the crime. It is not a reflection of our commitment to the verdict. We continue to believe, as we always have, 
that he was rightly and fairly convicted of the murder of Jessica Briggs. Clearly, Mr. Sanborn made his decision after he heard the quality of the testimony of the witnesses in this matter. State Attorney Meg Elam, who you just heard from, told me today that they made this offer to Sanborn and his team many times over the past several months, but they just decided to accept the deal today. Reporting live in Portland tonight, John Crisos, CBS 13 News. The victim's family says they're glad Sanborn's conviction still stands, but not that he's a free man. CBS 13's Dan McCarthy is following the emotional reaction from Jessica Briggs' stepmother. Dan? That's right, Kim and Jessica Briggs' stepmother says this entire process has been torture. However, she is satisfied with today's decision because freedom won't change the facts. She spoke to us outside the courtroom today and said that justice was served, echoing the state in what she believes is the most important aspect in this ruling, that Anthony Sanborn remains a convicted killer. Her stepdaughter Jessica was 16 years old when she was murdered in Portland. She says after spending three weeks in court for the hearing, she still doesn't have any doubt that Sanborn was her killer. There was enough stuff like the bloody pants and just not counting the stuff that, you know, like the Jerry Rossi stuff that they all had a fit about or didn't believe. Not even counting that type of thing. There was so much other stuff that I really never changed my mind. And Briggs said she didn't have anything to say to Sanborn, now walking away a free man after serving 27 years in prison. Coming up tonight at 7, though, we take a look and ask her if she believes that Portland police did a good job 27 years ago. In Portland, Dan McCarthy, CBS 13 News. Back to you. All right, Dan. Sanborn's attorneys say that they still believe their client is innocent and that he took the best option available to him today. CBS 13 Sam Reed is live for us in Westbrook, where Sanborn has been living and is now a free man here. Out there, Sam. Greg, while well, Anthony Sanborn's lawyers tell us accepting this deal was a tough one, after spending 27 years in prison, Sanborn has always maintained his innocence, something his lawyers tell us they agree with. Now, Amy Fairfield and Tim Zarillo say if the deal meant admitting guilt, he would have rather gone back to prison, somewhere they say he should have never even been in the first place. Anthony Sanborn was nowhere to be found after court today, but his lawyers read us a statement from him claiming there is only one judge who can ultimately judge me. After hundreds of hours working the case, Fairfield tells us she's been asked the question, if this is the case you went to law school for, she says she's happy with the outcome and having grown close to Sanborn, but the process to get here was an ugly one. Tony Sanborn is, was, and will probably continue to be my inspiration. However, I can tell you that if I had gone my entire career and not seen the likes of what I saw in this case with withholding of exculpatory and Brady information, misconduct, I, 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 would, I would have been just fine and happy to be in traffic court. Now, we knocked on Anthony Sanborn's door here in Westbrook tonight, but nobody answered. Coming up tonight at 7, we'll have his full statement. We're live in Westbrook. Sam Reed for CBS 13 News. I'm going to send it back to you, Jen. And at the live desk now, we are breaking down the timeline of events that led us to where we are today. Nearly three decades ago, 16-year-old Jessica Briggs' body was pulled from the Portland Pier. That was on May 24th of 1989. She was brutally murdered and her body dumped in the water. Anthony Sanborn, also 16, and Briggs' ex-boyfriend was charged with murder. And in a 1992 uh, jury, he was found guilty and sentenced to 70 years in prison. Fast forward to April of this year. The state's only eyewitness changes her original testimony, saying she never actually saw the murder. Sanborn is granted bail while he waits for a post-conviction review. That hearing started on October 10th. And in 21 days of hearing, we heard from two witnesses who recanted their testimony. Several crime experts testified, as well as the detectives who worked the case back in the 90s. Today seems to mark the end of this process more than 28 years after Briggs' death.